We begin with breaking news. The U.S. Supreme Court says it will allow Texas to enforce new abortion restrictions. This law could stay in effect for now as the appeals process moves forward. That has led to at least a dozen abortion clinics in Texas closing. I think it's a huge setback for the pro-choice movement, huge setback for abortion access. And I think it's a sign that the burden of proof will be very high for clinics to prove that these laws aren't overly onerous. So there's another decision also, Molly, in New Mexico on abortion today, right? This was a vote in the city of Albuquerque, New Mexico. So it's a very local election on the issue of late-term abortion. Voters there rejected a measure, 55 to 45 percent, that would have banned abortions after a woman is five months pregnant. No one had ever tried to pass an abortion restriction at the local level. For pro-life activists who are not focused on ballot measures who, who are focused on closing down specific clinics. This opens up a new strategy for them to do that through ballot initiatives. Had it passed, it would have been the first municipal late-term abortion restriction, but it's unclear whether or not they are constitutional. Ultimately, the goal of the pro-life movement is to take the 20-week abortion ban to the Supreme Court. In red states, it's becoming increasingly difficult to get an abortion. New Mexico had some of the most lax abortion laws in the country. They have no limits on late-term abortions. The reason why pro-life activists pursued the late-term abortion bill at the local level was because they couldn't get it passed at the state level. I don't think that we'll see a you know a city-by-city city epidemic of anti-abortion laws, but I do think that we will see this again. How organized they were around the issue, I think that that really kind of energized them to take this elsewhere. So I think that for the time being, it sort of is the wild west of pro-life groups pushing through abortion restrictions.